is Philip Johnson, patient coordinator, Spinago Wellness. We're here to do a intake video with a brand new patient today. So why don't we begin with you telling us your name and where you're from. My name is Jason from uh, Louisiana. And what we want to do, because this is your first day here and this will be a time of discovery for you. Yes. And, uh, um, and your initial consult and visit hasn't taken place yet. So we're going to talk about what you knew before coming in here. Yes. So briefly tell us what your chief complaints are. Um, I've been dealing with uh, extreme muscle spasticity in my uh, lower extremities, um, severe clonus in both, uh, both left and right ankles, um, muscle tone, uh, limited loss of range of motion, predominantly in my lower extremities, but most recently uh, in my upper extremities, I'm experiencing some uh, hyperreflexia okay. and some uh, range of motion. Uh, issues as well. Um, active spasms in my lumbar and lower extremities that uh, create a lot of pain in my uh, pretty much throughout my, my spine, predominantly my lower lumbar area down into my legs. Uh, on a scale of 7 to 10, I probably live in a, an 8 on any given day. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Philip Johnson, patient coordinator here at Spinaga Wellness in Palm Harbor, Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. We're glad that you're watching this video today. And uh, as always, we like to bring you some stories, wonderful stories of what we think are success and seeing people recover and uh, getting an opportunity to return back to the life that they love. So tell us your first name. Jason. And Jason, where are you from? Uh, home of Louisiana. We have had some great opportunities with some folks from Louisiana. Yes. First, we love the folks from Louisiana. Great people. Um, but you guys must have some bugs in Louisiana. We do. We do. <laughs> well, let's jump into your story. First, let's go back. How long ago did you get sick? Uh, I've been sick since probably my mid-20s. Uh, okay. We only look like you're 30 now. I'm 45 years old. 45. So you've had it quite a few years now then. Well, how did it start? What started taking place? Um, I never forget it. I was I was in the state police academy, laying in bed and started having twitches and spasms in my legs. Okay. It um, just kind of it was undeniable. It wasn't like a muscle. It wasn't a trolley horse. It was just okay. constant twitching and and spasms. And then I started noticing that I was fatiguing quickly. Okay. Uh, my strength was still there, but I just didn't have the stamina that I had before. Um, and, and that's kind of what initially started, uh, knowing something was wrong. Okay. So did the symptoms just kind of plateau at that point, or did others develop through the years? Or? No, they started progressing um, to a point where I started seeking, uh, I went to a neurologist. Mm -hmm. Uh, we ran a battery of tests, and, and at that point it was it was fibromyalgia. Okay. It was depression. It was anxiety, uh, um, and and I kind of just accepted that that could be the case for several years, um, and then that was about a ten year span. Okay. That I knew something was wrong, and I felt it, and it was progressing, but it hadn't gotten to a point yet where it scared me. Okay. And about 10 years ago, it got to a point where it was scaring me. All right. Uh, my legs. Felt like you were deteriorating. I was deteriorating. Um, my legs were to the point where uh, my muscles were no longer, I didn't have a thigh muscle. Okay. It was ropes, striated ropes that made up muscles. And they would twitch so bad and they would burn and hurt. Uh, and my reflexes were getting so bad that uh, I, I could barely walk barefoot. Okay. Um, I was starting to trip 
I was stumbling. Uh, simple flight of stairs were starting to be a problem for me. And uh, then my energy level was decreasing rapidly. More. Okay. Uh, so I went to LSU Medical Center mm -hmm. and uh, saw one of their leading neuromuscular doctors okay. uh, under the direction of Dr. John England, uh, his department. Um, and initially their, their diagnosis, their four differential diagnoses were either ALS, PLS, mm -hmm. stiff person syndrome, or uh, hereditary spastic paparesis. Okay. Um, they couldn't tell me which one it was, and like they basically told me it doesn't matter which one it is. It's an upper motor neuron disease. Mm -hmm. It's going to progress, and all we can do is treat your symptoms. So uh, I stuck with that for about two and a half years. Um, they took ALS off the plate fairly early, but they left the others. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just felt the need for a second opinion, so I went to Baylor uh, University mm -hmm. and uh, was fortunate enough to see Dr. Harati, who was the leading ALS doctor, uh, him and his associates okay. through the Baylor, the Baylor uh, College University system. Um, same four differential diagnoses. Um, almost identical. It was deja vu. It was deja vu. <laughs> um, he started videoing my uh, exams because okay. there was progression was starting to get more and more intense. Um, he he ended up going with the stiff person diagnosis, okay. which I wish I knew the real medical term for that because mm -hmm. there is a medical term, but right. it's way too big. Okay. <laughs> um, and basically the same thing was that uh, it's a progressive upper motor neuron disease. Uh, the legs were going to continue to progress, spasticity, uh, reflexes, uh, loss of strength. Uh, and at that point it was still just my lower extremities. Okay. Um, so same thing. All we can do is treat your symptoms. Okay. Loaded me up with all the diazepams and Good Lord, Gabby Pinton, they tried me out on epileptic, epileptic medicines mm -hmm. to stop the, the spasms. Uh, just about every sedative you can imagine to try to slow the brain down to stop those spasms. Okay. Uh, they put me. Probably seeing once a month treatments yeah. or visits. I was, and I was going probably once every six to eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, that doctor, uh, at some point realized that, you know, the unknown was just not good enough for me. Okay. So she was uh, worked with uh, doctors up at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Okay. And they got me into Rochester and Mayo. I uh, spent uh, a week and a half the first time there, and I went back for another week and a half. All right. Uh, they a lot ran of testing, me, I guess. a lot of testing. <laughs> uh, they ran me through every test you can imagine. Uh, they ended up diagnosing me with stiff person syndrome, okay. which is an upper motor neuron disease. I had uh, central brain hyperexcitability, okay. uh, which was what was causing all the spasticity and uh, the myoclonus and uh, all the, 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 the lower extremity issues I was okay. having. That was the first trip. When I went back the second time, they took stiff person off the table and basically said, you have a progressive upper motor neuron disease of unknown etiology. Okay. We know it's progressing. We know it's affecting your upper motor neurons. We know it is, it is getting worse, uh, but we can't tell you why. Why? And we tried IVIG infusions, mm -hmm. uh, did 18 of those uh, at about $22,000 a pop. Wow. We did uh, IV steroids, made me worse. Uh, they had me on so much medication that I couldn't function. Okay. Um, at that point, things had progressed to where I, I was really struggling to walk. And uh, just, I worked upstairs, and just getting to my office upstairs was okay. a problem. I quit hunting, I quit fishing, I quit doing all the things that I enjoyed doing because it was just too tiresome. And you lose your mobility. It just, it just wasn't worth mm -hmm. it. The, the only energy I had was I used up just to get through the work day. Okay. And I had nothing left. I was, if I wasn't working, I was sleeping. 
that just was wiped out. Um, Baylor, in conjunction with Methodist Hospital in Houston, did a, a joint study on me with a team of physical therapists mm -hmm. and doctors and uh, a representative from the uh, Medronic Corporation. Mm -hmm. And they did a movement study on me and unanimously decided that I needed to have an intrathecal vacuum put in my abdomen. That was a big word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically what they were going to do is a, implant a pump in my stomach muscles, okay. run a catheter into my cervical spine, oh my. Okay. and drip baclofen into my uh, spinal space, the intrathecal space. And well, that's that was, not a decision you make overnight, yeah. is it? <laughs> and, and that was the only thing they felt they could do to stop the spasticity, mm -hmm. because at this point the spasms had gotten to where they were rupturing discs in my back. My goodness. Uh, they were starting to damage the nerves in my legs. Uh, and through that study they did, they determined that my upper body was starting to be affected okay. by the disease. So I, I was scheduled for surgery. Uh, I had basically just decided that if I couldn't determine what I was fighting, I was going to try to make myself as comfortable as possible. Okay. Um, in this whole process of 10 years, I had five spinal taps. Okay. They were all negative for Lyme. Hmm. Um, and uh, right before I was, I, I was scheduled for surgery, and before I went for the surgery, a friend of mine convinced me to come here. Okay. Uh, he was, he's a biochemist, and, and he, was, he was convinced that I had Lyme disease. All right. Even though all my tests had shown that I didn't, okay. according to the government. Um, so I came here and uh, was diagnosed with Lyme disease, a very severe case of Lyme disease. Uh, mold, mold toxicity, which I never knew I had, um, and a parasitic infection. So I was uh, basically getting eat, eaten from the inside out. Outside. My goodness, how did this, this is overwhelming, the story is overwhelming, to deal with this, wake up with it, not just in the morning, you probably had a lot of sleepless nights, yes, wrestling in the bed, and how did it affect your life? It's got to just shut you down yeah. everything. It, uh, it got to the point where uh, all I could do was work, and that was even beginning to be an issue. By mm -hmm. 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I was wiped out. Uh, when I got home, I had to go to bed. I just physically couldn't do any more. Uh, the weekends, I slept all weekend. Mm -hmm. I quit going to events and ball games and mm -hmm. uh, all the things that fathers are supposed to do yeah. with kids in school and, and a family and a wife. and. Um, you know, I just got to a point where all I could do was get through the work day and sleep to yeah. get through the next work day. You've been with us how long? 18 weeks. 18 weeks. And of course you're coming in. I remember when you came in and uh, holding to the walls, holding on to furniture, and you probably needed a wheelchair or a yeah. walker, um, but you were just trying to tough your way through that had you used any of that at home a walker or wheelchair no um but i was at the point where as much as i had swore i would never let it put me in a wheelchair um, i was to the point where i knew i was heading that way yeah and uh, when i came here day one uh, you're absolutely right uh, walking especially barefoot because those reflexes were so bad that mm -hmm. they would trigger spasms uh, you know, I, I bounced all over these hallways trying to walk for you guys. Yeah, yeah I watched you. And, uh, you know, within three weeks of being here, just through the detox and getting some of those toxins out of my brain and out of my body and putting the supplements into my body that I was lacking, um, my walking improved 100%. If people were to see you today, your story would be like a science fiction story because they would look at you and say, this is not the same guy. Right. Not the same guy that walked in here. It's an incredible thing. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, I know you got a little ways to go. You're still going to work on some stuff. But you had years of volume and years of toxins and that you took a hit. And it takes a while to pull all of that out. Absolutely. But you have had such an incredible recovery. You've been uh, such an inspiration to so many people here and continue it's, to be. Absolutely.
and uh, all I can tell folks is, like I tell people here as we're talking, is that you you have to believe, and you have to open your mind up to the doctor and let him do what he does. He's and, good at what he does, and uh, it it's a struggle for people that are hard natured and strong minded to uh, open your mind up to 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 such new and innovative things. But the reason we're here is because no one else could help us. So the thing I would recommend to people is just open your mind and your heart to the doctor and the staff and uh, let them do what they do. Did you struggle with uh, the fact that 90, 95% of what we do is all natural? Uh, did you struggle with that, that how can they make yeah. me well? Yeah. I did, and, and I, I never, in my wildest dreams, uh, respected supplements. There you, you know, go. I thought supplements were just a money racket. You know, uh, yeah. there's no way a natural supplement can can give you the results of a prescription medication. Yeah. And uh, I learned very quickly here that these supplements are number one. Uh, a ton of research has gone in by the staff here. Yeah. To pick which supplements. They, they use mm -hmm. um, and the numbers the, the improvements that I've seen in, in my nutritional uh, aspect mm -hmm. is undeniable yeah I mean these numbers I went from basically having no protein in my body no amino acids a wellness nightmare a wellness <laughs> my pituitary gland had been shut down for years I wasn't producing any natural hormones mm -hmm. no testosterone no uh, just my, my mind, my brain wasn't doing its job. Yeah. So these natural supplements became what my body couldn't produce. Your body can become so deprived that the brain is no longer even turning switches on any longer. You're just deteriorating and suffering and you go numb. You literally go numb in life. Not only the brain but the body begins to shut down. Yeah. But within three weeks of, uh, of just putting those supplements in my body, and giving me the nutrition that I was lacking, um, not only did I, not only was, did my walking improve, but I went into a natural kill. My body was given just enough to where it wanted to start working again and started killing the Lyme disease. And for those of you that are watching, what he's talking about is that his immune system improved, the wellness protocol that he was receiving caused his body to jump start and say, hey, there's something inside of me that's not right. And, and that's the natural killer cells that begin to take over, um, which work in our behavior, you know, for our behavior to get us well. So those are incredible things to experience and to be a part of. Um, of course, our drips, for those that are watching, you know, our proprietary testing told us so much about you. You know, what was depleted, what had been compromised. And so every day you were getting just those detoxification drips. We were adding to them mm -hmm. those things that you needed to get your body, your wellness protocol back up and optimize every cell and get all those things taking place. Because we, we tailor make those every morning. Um, I, I have to say, when, and when I first got here, I found it a bit hard to believe that each infusion could be individually made because we were told it was individual treatment. Mm -hmm. But when you get here, you, you're kind of like, that's almost impossible. <laughs> they, they can make my, my bag every day different than yeah. the next person's. Yeah. But you learn very quickly that, that you truly do get into individualized treatment here. You do, and um, our staff's very good about that and monitoring that. And I know I talk to people sometimes that says, well, I've tried an IV therapy of some sort or some sort of a cocktail and I didn't get any better and my answer to them is always well I can promise you what you had was probably Kool-Aid compared to our moonshine <laughs> because this is uh, homemade and, and um, it's powerful absolutely and, uh, well, it, uh, it made a believer in me it said within three weeks uh, it was undeniable um, you can't you can't put a price tag on it when you see that much improvement over a period of just a few weeks and uh, and in the 18 weeks that I've been here uh, I've, I've continued to improve you know not only have my legs improved but my upper body strength is probably as strong as I was 10 years ago my goodness you know, so, so what's going to happen next you're going home this is Thanksgiving weekend so you're going home and um, 
things will be different, I guess, when you get home. Yeah. I'm going to go home through the holidays, and uh, because I, I believe so strongly in the protocol here mm -hmm. and the doctors here, um, I'm going to come back on January 11th and, and probably stay another two to three months to finish this. Uh, I, I really believe it's undeniable that I've made progress, and uh, we've got it on the ropes, and, and mm -hmm. I just... I want to finish the fight. You want that knockout. And, uh, and I, there's no doubt in my mind that through the, the, the grace of God and the staff and, and Dr. Spinato and that if I come back and, and just continue it, that uh, we'll finish it. Well, everybody's going to miss you while you're gone. You've been a highlight every day. Just uh, your sense of humor, your courageous spirit. And it's just been a blessing to have you here. It's uh, it's a refuge for people that that have been through the journey that I've been through. There's tons of people that have walked the same journey of unknown and being told it's psychological and being convinced that it's it's you know you just have to live with it. Yeah. You have to accept the fact that you're just going to be crippled and you don't have the right to know what it is. Um, you don't have to accept that. You don't. And this is a refuge for people that have been through the journey and you learn. There's just a spirit here among the, the patients. It's undeniable that uh, they all feel the same way, that this was our last resort, mm -hmm. and there's a reason we're here, um, and uh, we're all going to be healed. Only through this. See those miracles. Absolutely. And, uh, you touched on a, a sore spot with me. With you know, 12 years I suffered with Lyme disease, and I've told some of that story before, but uh, the depression that would come over me every month when I had that monthly visit with the doctor knowing that and I'd sit in the car I don't want to walk in there because there's nothing new going to happen here Absolutely. I'm suffering they're not going to offer a solution in years and years of that and uh, so this has been a wonderful opportunity for myself for you and so many others and we appreciate you taking the time to tell your story this is going to bring hope to so many people mm -hmm.